night hacking live stream at the QCon conference. So um, sorry for you guys very close to the table. Is the volume OK? All right, excellent. <laughs> um, so we're going to be live streaming during the lunch breaks today through Wednesday. I have a pleasure being joined by Andrew Saltis from Hortonworks. How are you doing, Andrew? I'm doing good, thank you. And um, earlier today, you were giving a presentation at the conference here about um, the streaming API mess. Correct, and it was about Apache Beam and just kind of the need for a unifying API across all the different streaming technologies that are out there. So how many, how many different streaming technologies are there out there? It's probably about 27 or 28 of them right now <laughs> that I was able to identify. So. Okay, and probably none of them have compatible. Yeah, there's maybe two that do. Storm and Heron now have the same API. Other than that, they're probably all different. All slightly different for, for very important reasons. And are they commercial or proprietary? Combination. There's some commercial products that are out there, and then there's a lot of them that are open source. Say the 80, 90% of that is all open source. Okay, but even the open source projects are kind of producing their own Mess of API. APIs. Everybody has to learn new APIs when they switch between different products. Correct. Um, probably training issues with getting folks on projects which use multiple. Correct. So there's a training issue. There's an operational issue. There's a burden for everyone to learn a whole new stack, a whole new API, a whole new way of looking at things. Okay, but there's a there's a solution for this. There is a solution, <laughs> uh, and, and I think Apache Beam is potentially one of those solutions, and it may not be the end-all, be-all that it's the project that leads the way, but the way to think about it and the ideas that are being pushed forward need to be discussed, and yeah. something needs to have that layer of abstraction. Okay, so how does Apache Beam work? Does it sit on top of the existing APIs, or how does it adapt from kind of a common API to the different available streaming APIs. So you provide an API that it has as an SDK and then yeah. it has task runners. Okay. So as someone that provides an engine, you provide a runner for that. So then as the SDK user and those of us that are building applications would interact with that. And that could exist across multiple languages okay. and across multiple engines. Got it. And is, is it the folks in the Beam project who are writing those adapters or is it expected the folks on the streaming APIs would plug into Apache Beam? It could be anyone. It's an Apache project, so it's open <laughs> for anyone to write it. <laughs> you know, I think they've written, obviously, the Cloud Dataflow. Cloudera uh, supported and committed the Spark one. Okay. And the Data Artesian folks did the one for Flink. Nice. So it's open for anyone to work on them. And how many, how many of the existing, you, you mentioned there was 20? Like 27, 28. 27, 28. Mm -hmm. How many different streaming APIs is there support for an Apache Beam now? In Beam, there's three, and they're all at different levels. Cloud Dataflow, Google's, obviously, is completely supported. Uh, Flink has almost complete support, and then okay. Spark is lagging behind. Okay. So, and then with the plan for better support with for the plan for better streaming APIs. Correct. Um, yeah, but I think probably even though there's a large number of streaming libraries, not all of them are super active and used. There's probably a small set which most people... That's correct. Are yeah, there'd be a small set that's that's small that's most active, but there's even new ones coming out. You know, Concord IO came out just a week, a couple of weeks ago, and they're yeah. going to dethrone Spark. Oh. So there's there's new ones coming out, new ways to think about it. So it's still an evolving space. Cool. Yeah. yeah so these guys were just chatting about Spark. So you think that presentation's obsolete? I, <laughs> I don't know, but I wouldn't say Spark is obsolete. Spark is definitely a project that is not going away. Yeah. Spark Streaming is a great project, uh, but it's interesting because Spark Streaming support in Beam is not a limitation of Beam. The lack of support in Spark Streaming is Spark Streaming's lack of support of advanced streaming concepts. Got it. So some of the advanced windowing that just don't exist in a micro-batch world and some things that are being addressed in Spark 2.0 will help bring up that compatibility level. So it'll have more compatibility with Beam. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. So, was Quark one of the ones which already has support in Beam, or is that a future? Uh, Quark does not, but it's a uh, Cloud Dataflow, Flink, yeah. and then Spark Streaming. Okay. And there's supposedly people maybe working on one for Storm. Some people still use it. Yeah. And really, for any engine that you need support for, we want to build it out. Cool. Sounds good. 
Um, so for folks who want to learn more about Apache Beam or possibly get started using it or contribute to the project, are there any good resources for them to, to use? Yeah, it's an Apache Incubator project. So yeah. I think it's uh, incubator.apache.org uh, uh, Beam, I think, maybe the URL. I may have that wrong, but if you look it up on the Apache site or just search for Apache Beam, it should come up. Okay. And then I think also the talks here are getting published as well. So possibly they can, they can watch your talk. Yep. Talks are nice being published. To Apache Beam. Slides are being published. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Andrew. Appreciate your, yeah, thank you time, for your time here at the QCon conference to do a short interview. Um, next up, we're going to interview Chris Richardson and talk a little bit about microservices. So, thank you guys for watching the live stream.